In this section, I will show you techniques for securing Ionic 4 apps and what to do after you're finished with this course. Now, we want to wind things up by looking at how to secure your apps when you release them into the wild. At the very end of this section, I will give you some tips on how to further increase your Ionic 4 skills. Let's dive in. Welcome to the tutorial video on how to protect your Ionic 4 code for published apps. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to protect your Ionic 4 hybrid code from being decompiled. You should remember that when you're making a native app for iOS or Android using Ionic, you are making a web app that is wrapped within a native web view shell. This makes it very easy for someone to decompile your app and poke around in your sensitive code. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can secure your code from prying eyes. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can protect your Ionic application code using JScrambler. JScrambler is a JavaScript obfuscation tool that helps protect your code from reverse engineering. Now, JScrambler is a premium service. However, it does have a free trial, which we're making use of in this tutorial. It, however, does have some limited obfuscation features. So in the code bundle, I've included a template for the trial version and a template for the premium features if you choose to subscribe. So the first step is we want to sign up for a new account, confirm our email address, and then log in to the dashboard. Once we've landed in our dashboard, the next step is we want to create a new application. We're gonna call it Ionic App, and our protection type is going to be Code Integrity. Our app has been created. Let's click on the dashboard link again. All right, that's great. Next, we want to head over to the command line inside our project folder. So here we are in the terminal and we're inside our project folder 9.1, which is in the code bundle. Next, we want to install JScrambler and we do that by running npm install jscrambler hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev. Great, JScrambler has been installed. Let's clear our screen. Next, we want to open our project in our code editor. So here we have our project open in Visual Studio Code. Let's edit the package.json file. Within package.json, we want to locate scripts, which is here, and we want to add a new entry. So what this entry does is it creates a CLI hook that will trigger the JScrambler command after the Ionic build process is finished. So let's make sure we save the file. In order for this command to be executed successfully, we need to add some API keys and application ID to the JScrambler RC settings file in our project's root folder. Here we have the jscrambler rc file. And here we have the space for our access key, secret key, and our application ID. For these, we need to head to the jscrambler web dashboard. So let's click on our application. Once our application has loaded, right here in the top center, you can see we have our application ID. So we'll click that button to copy it and head back to Visual Studio Code. And we'll paste our app ID. Next, let's get our access key and secret key. For that, we need to click on the dashboard link. Then in the bottom left corner, Options, 
and then profile. Then we have our API credentials at the bottom right side. The access key and the secret key. And then let's save the jscrambler rc settings file. That's it. That's all we have to do to set up jscrambler in our project. The next step is we want to now build our application. So let's head back to the terminal. So in the terminal, first we want to run ionic build. Next, we will build our app and run it on the Android emulator. We'll do that by running Ionic Cordova Run Android. Here we can see JScrambler is running after the Ionic build process. So we can see our application is running in the emulator, meaning that we've successfully obfuscated our code. So let's close the emulator. And let's head back to the web dashboard to check out what the obfuscation looks like. So let's go to the dashboard and select our app. Once your application has loaded on the JScrambler web dashboard, you'll notice right here on the left that we have this file main-es2015.js. If you click on it, it will load some source code. So this source code is what your TypeScript code is transpiled into by Ionic. You can see here that we have some familiar files like app-routing.module.ts and we have some Ionic template code up here. If we scroll down, you'll notice we have app.module.ts so this is the code that is generated when you're building your Ionic app. And this is what is then run in the web view. So JScrambler takes this source code and obfuscates it into this protected code. Now, obviously you can still see some of the Ionic code in here. However, that's because we're using the trial version. When you're using the premium version with the premium obfuscation tools, it will be completely indecipherable and impossible for anyone to reverse engineer. So in case you are having issues when JScrambler is running or when you're trying to build your application, if it says something like, quote, was not able to find main.js, or main-es2015.js, unquote, you should come to the JScrambler RC settings and play around with this source file field. So you could experiment with writing it like this, main-es2015.js, or you could simply try main.js. Another issue could be that this folder will not be available at all, this www folder. That means that you should run Ionic build before you can run Ionic Cordova run Android. So the Ionic build command will then prepare this www assets folder. That's it for securing your Ionic 4 code from being decompiled.